Another spectacular sunset near Sprouting Horn on Kauai's south side. People gather at the shoreline hoping to catch a glimpse of the fabled green flash. Instead of one in the ocean, they begin seeing and hearing a green flash in the sky. This is the nightly invasion of rose-ringed parakeets. Um, what turned out to be a novelty and something that we would kind of uh, entertain ourselves with while we watched them roost in the evenings turned into a nuisance once our farmers started approaching us and saying, hey, as cute as these birds are, they're very destructive to our lychee crops, to our long gone crops. And um, increasingly, we've been hearing more and more concerns from our farmers, from our gardeners, and from people that live in these neighborhoods that unfortunately uh, play home to these rose-ringed parakeets. Also known as ring-necked parakeets, Kauai County Council Member Derek Kawakami is one of numerous government representatives fielding calls about what's become the most visible invasive species on Kauai. Rewind now to circa 1968. Uh, the Bishop Museum has some background information that states that in 1968 there was a bed and breakfast somewhere in Lawai and they brought in some rose ring parakeets and clipped their primaries and had them just sort of hanging out free uh, by the front porch and around the bed and breakfast. Um, they got away from there and started establishing themselves at some point after 1968. Bill Lucy manages the Kauai Invasive Species Committee and what to do about this marauding winged invader has become a top priority. Parakeets are um, what we call a slow invader, actually. Since they've been here for 50 years or so, they don't really um, exhibit a fast explosion until they reach a critical mass. So for a number of years, there was 50 or a few hundred, and then over time, they reached the point where there's a few thousand and then they're all having offspring and at that point it becomes a very strong invasion and the curve, the invasion curve starts to increase rapidly. Current estimates put the rose ringed population at around 5,000 birds. That's plenty to cause big headaches for Kauai's agricultural seed companies, small independent farmers, backyard growers and condo owners. Listen to their stories and see the damage this efficient winged army is causing environmentally and economically, not to mention their potential health impacts for people, and you begin to understand why many folks on Kauai want and need a strong counterattack. It's actually really astounding um, the damage they can cause. Uh, Rosewing parakeets are a small bird, so you wouldn't think they could do too much, but uh, we've, we've seen some homeowners have an entire tangerine tree stripped in one day. Um, it's quite extensive, actually. Um, the problem is that they are birds and they bring in other diseases as well. So even if you see a little bit of feeding, it still pretty much ruins that crop directly around it too. Um, so either it's physical removal of fruit or also um, contamination of fruit or vegetables as well. Farmer Jerry Ornelas confirms that. And you know, we've also got the issue now of food safety, right? Because these birds will land on the top of the tree, they'll poop. If any of that poop gets on any of the other fruit, even if it hasn't been damaged by the birds, you have to discard that fruit. In 2016, he tells the Invasive Species Committee's Bill Lucy, he lost 30% of his crop to the parakeets or about $6,000 which is a lot with small farm profit margins already razor thin. He also verifies that like any strong invasion force, they have advanced scouts, they employ safety in numbers, and they choose high lookouts. The pattern I've seen of uh, predation is that they'll take the fruit on the top of the tree first. They don't like to hang on the side. They don't like to be vulnerable, apparently. They like, they like to perch where they can see what's going on. So they'll take all the fruit off the top of the tree 
right? Which is the best fruit because it gets the best sunlight and the, you know, the size is up pretty well. Farmers like Ornelas are using netting to try and protect their crops. It works okay for low growing fruits and vegetables, but is expensive and tough to put on broad towering trees like lychee. Parakeet invasion probably started about four years ago, four or five years ago. Uh, the first crop they started doing damage on was uh, lychee and they devastated my lychee for uh, one season when we had a lot of fruit. He says a flock of parakeets can wipe out an entire tree overnight. This is a lily koi that the parakeets punctured and ate the, all the uh, pulp out of and they seem to really like lily koi. Or pretty much anything they can get their beaks on. Seed corn in vast fields on Kauai's west side is another preferred mill for these voracious eaters. Well, my name is Robin Young. Um, I'm the site operations manager for uh, Syngenta Parent Seed. Large agricultural interests like this one have been forced to spend tens of thousands of dollars to protect their crops. So uh, what do you estimate the damages with the parakeets? Oh, it's devastating. Um, for example, this field here, it's, it's, it's probably about a two and a half acre field. Um, I, I started noticing the parrot to coming in to the area maybe about two weeks ago. Maybe about four or five of them just flying. I watched them every evening. Wasn't too concerned and about five days ago, um, they came in by the, by the flocks. There was probably 500 of them out here, I mean, guesstimating up this field here. All the way down. So you're looking at 25% of my field here. And then it's like that sporadic throughout the entire field, but this is the worst for some From the cornfields to fruit farms to condo complexes around Poipu, people have developed a quick and dramatic change of heart about the rose-ringed parakeet. No longer viewed as pretty, smart, and interesting birds to observe, the parakeets are now seen as public enemy number one in some corners of Kauai. Oh, one came out. So this battle uses some of the tools of modern warfare. Originally, when they first showed up, it was about four hours a day of just poop cleanup on this property alone. And then since they started shooting lasers and whatnot, it kind of whittled down to two hours a day. And with the drone, we're actually down quite a bit with that as well. This complex had to cut down three trees around the swimming pool to keep the deck and the water from being covered in bird droppings. It seems if you're successful in winning one battle, they simply take flight and the fight elsewhere, using, like in war, surprise to their advantage. I went home one day, there was no parakeets. I came back the next day to the entire place covered in bird poop. So it was overnight and it was very overwhelming. Across the road at Cohio Shores Condos. Um, boy, it's been a problem. You know, um, if you were to rent a black convertible, the next day, it's gonna be a white splatter convertible. Royal palms are a favored roost for the birds, so this complex, in Fernandez's words, butchered its trees to try and prevent landings. We did a lot of serious um, haircut and then we had to butcher those, those um, um, palm trees. And um, boy, it doesn't look good after we trim those. It's just a small spike sticking up, up there. And a lot of our tourists, they don't really understand why um, our palm trees looks like that. You know, normally they don't look like that. But that's the only solution that we had um, temporarily um, to cut down the, the poop. Temporary measures are the best anyone can take now, while various agencies search for permanent solutions hoping for broad governmental support to reduce the population on Kauai and have control measures in place before the rose-ringed parakeets invade another island. Um, I can pretty much speak for myself and for a few colleagues that we have recognized this as a problem and we're looking uh, towards a collaborative effort between county, state and federal. Um, it is going to be an ongoing issue. Um, we do not want to see this t thing turn into another cokey frog where we could have addressed it early before it turned into some kind of catastrophic event. It could be catastrophic on numerous levels if the birds fly higher and higher into the mountains and begin impacting native plants and watersheds. Right now they're in the lowland areas of Kauai, but if they start to move up into the upland mountains, that's a concern for us because that's where most of our native species thrive. 
Left unchecked and uncontrolled, the parakeet population here could explode to more than 10,000 birds in the next five years. Numerous other places, particularly northern European countries, are also dealing with booming parakeet populations. If there's a silver lining to this, perhaps it will raise awareness about the impacts of invasive species on Hawaii's environment and economy. In the case of the rose-ringed parakeet, the effects are now and will only get worse the more they increase in number and spread their wings.